All right, guys, so a few months ago, I built my very first mining rig. Um, and in the past few weeks, I've had a lot of requests for an update, both on YouTube and on Twitter, people asking me how things are going and whether it's still worth getting involved in crypto mining as we come towards the end of 2021 and move into 2022. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a full update what's happened with my mining rig. We're gonna look at some of the money that we've generated, also look at energy costs, what the heat has been like, just have a general look over what's happened over the past few months. So the first thing, how to build a mining rig for beginners 2021. I launched this video on June the 3rd, 2021. So I've been mining now for around five months, I guess, June, July, August, September, October, and we're into the end of first week of November. So let's say five and a quarter months I've been mining for at the moment. So if you haven't checked out this video yet and are considering building your own mining rig, make sure you check it out, it's about a 30 minute tutorial and this will talk you through the whole process of how to build your very own mining rig. I'll probably pop up a link to this at the end of the video as well. But before we get into the video, if you're not following me on Twitter, I would highly recommend it. Follow me at Darren the DGen. I post all of my mining updates, my crypto updates, what coins I'm invested in. So make sure you're following me there. We're starting to build a good community. We've just passed 300 followers and we've only been live a few weeks. So on to my mining rig. For those of you that aren't aware, I built a mining rig with RTX 2060 graphics cards. So at the time, these cost around about 500 pound each. And I've just had a quick look through Google at the moment. And they're not going for very much less than that at the moment. Maybe you'd be able to get one as cheap as £400, or if you want an eBay, maybe a little bit cheaper still. But I paid around £500 for each card. And the total system cost, I think, was around £3,200. So that is effectively my break-even point for this mining rig. Now, being honest, when I first started looking into crypto mining, this is when... Mining rewards were very, very high. And I was expecting to be making maybe £20 to £30 pound per day. But um, that was pretty much the first bull run of the year. Uh, and that kind of come to an end in April, May, and the mining fees really dropped off. And then there was an update to Ethereum, which is the main coin that we mine. And that really hit profits as well. So generally speaking, I've been mining around about 10 pound in value per day. So let me talk you through what happened. So this is my Coinbase wallet. So I mine with a piece of software called NiceHash, which I'll come back to in a moment. Now you can mine these coins directly if you wish, but I prefer to use NiceHash as it is so easy to use. I can just set and forget. And also the way they pay out, there are no fees. So if you're mining directly and then want to move that money about, there are transaction fees or gas fees. Whereas if you're mining with someone at NiceHash, they will pay out for free to Coinbase. So I don't mind earning a little bit less through NiceHash instead of going directly to keep things as simple as possible and also I recoup some of that in the fees that I don't have to pay when I come to Coinbase. So if we scroll down, we can see my first deposit from my mining rig was on June the 11th. So I've been mining for a week or two at that point and I've been regularly receiving payments. Um, and this icon here is when I started using Coinbase Pro. So the money gets transferred to Coinbase and then I transfer it over to my Coinbase Pro account. And you can see all the way up to November the 7th. So only yesterday was my most recent transfer from NiceHash to Coinbase to Coinbase Pro. And if we go through to Coinbase Pro now, we can see the total amount of Bitcoin I've got from mining is 2,356 pound. But keep in mind, I'm not actually mining Bitcoin. I'm using NiceHash and NiceHash will choose the best coin to mine at that time, which most of the year has been Ethereum. So I mine in Ethereum to generate the value and then nice hash pay me out in Bitcoin. So that's where I've got this money and this is why I've left it all in Bitcoin. And because Bitcoin has gone up in value, so when I first started mining, I think Bitcoin was around about $30,000. At the moment, it's around $65,000. So if that keeps going up, all of my previous mining profits will go up as well. Or if it goes down, all of those previous ones will go down as well. So it's completely up to you. Some people might want to cash out straight away. I believe Bitcoin is going a lot, lot higher over the coming years. So I'm just going to leave it here and see where we end up. So at the moment, I'm not quite at break even. Um, but I think it's fair to say if I sold my mining equipment at the moment, I would be well above break even. So if you take into account the mining proceeds here of £2,356, add that to the cost of the mining rig, I think would probably be somewhere around about the four and a half thousand pound, maybe five thousand pound mark. So I think I'm comfortably up. And for me, the best thing about getting into mining was actually getting involved in the crypto space. Once I'd invested money into hardware to start mining, 
I started going really deep into crypto and now I know so much more than I did a few months ago. So for me, that has been the biggest reward is learning all about this space. So just going back to my rig in general, let's go on to NiceHash and you can see the power of my rig. So my rig isn't overly powerful. The total hash rate is around about 191. So each GPU has a hash rate, I think of around 32. And you can see here, none of them are running really hot. This is the good thing about NiceHash. I tried mining some coins directly. Um, Ravencoin was one I tried directly but that generated a lot more heat than mining with NiceHash because mining Ethereum uses more of the memory clock on your GPU, whereas mining something like Ravencoin uses more of the actual processor on the GPU, and that kind of creates a lot more heat. So I haven't had any issues with heat, and if you're wondering how much heat is generated, the simplest way to take it is actually, these devices are pretty much 100% efficient at converting electricity to heat. So the total usage for my rig is just under half a kilowatt. I think it's around, around about 480 watts, if I can actually find the figure. So there it is, 468 watts. Now it might be a little bit more once you take into account a couple of other bits that I've got on the rig. So let's just say 500 watts or half a kilowatt. Now if you've got an electric heater running in your room, that will probably be a two kilowatt heater, or if you're running at half power, it'll be a one kilowatt heater. So if you've got run running at half a kilowatt, that gives you an idea of the type of heat that is generated. So for me, it's not been any issues at all. Now, if I had it in my own house, along with heating on at the same time, I think things would get a bit toasty. But if you've maybe got it somewhere else, maybe in a garage or in a shed, you're not gonna have any issues with this type of power. Now, if you build a really high-end mining rig with maybe, so for example, 3080s or 3070s, I think you're gonna generate a lot more heat and you might have to be a bit more proactive. But that was a good thing about these 2060s. These don't generate very much heat at all. They're relatively low cost in comparison to what GPUs cost at that time and still what GPUs cost at the moment. Um, but the overall heat is quite low and you get a reasonable return in terms of hash rate. So you can see my results, you know, I've gone through them already that these six GPUs are doing a decent job and I plan to continue mining. You know, in terms of electricity cost, as this is the other thing you need to keep in mind, if I'm generating around about 10 pound a day, actually we can do um, some more accurate maths than that at the moment. Let's go back to Coinbase. Um, I'll bring up a calculator so you guys can see it and pop that up as well so it's actually recording. So we've got 2,356 pound in value. Now, if Bitcoin hadn't gone up, obviously this would be less, but we can only do it with the figures that we're working with today. Now I've been mining for, I think I said five and a quarter months. So let's divide this by a 5.25. So it's around about 400, let's say 450 per month in generated revenue based on the current figure. So 450 pounds per month incoming. Now for the first, I think first four months I was mining, I was on a tariff that cost me around 15p per kilowatt hour. So we know my mining rig uses half a kilowatt. So if we do 0.5 times by 24 hours, we're using 12 kilowatts a day. And at that time I was paying 0.15 or 15p per kilowatt hour. So I was spending roughly one pound 80 per day. And that's what I was doing for the first four months. So if we times that by 30, I was roughly spending about 50 pound per month on electricity. So if I was generating around 450 pound in revenue, I was still making a 400 pound profit. Okay, I'm not in profit yet as I'm not past my break even point, but hopefully you guys get what I'm trying to say. Now things unfortunately are changing as many of you guys are aware, especially in the UK, electricity costs and energy costs are skyrocketing. We've had a number of providers go bust because they can't manage wholesale costs. So I was actually with one of those providers that have gone bust. So I've been moved over to a company called Optimus Energy. So their new kilowatt hour rate for electricity is 21.37p per day. So if we do that maths again, so we know we're using 12 kilowatts per day, we times it by 30 days in a month, and this time we'll times it by 0.22, just round that up to make it easier. So roughly now we're spending about 80 pound per month on electricity. So my electricity costs have gone up by about 50%, maybe a little bit more, but at the moment, with the way that crypto is, I'm still making profitable revenue per month and I'll continue to mine. So I'm happy with how things have gone. I think like I said earlier in the video, my kind of expectations at the start was a lot more money a lot quicker before dying off, but things did kind of calm down sooner. But at the same time, there's not many places you can make this type of return outside of the crypto world 
in such a short space of time. So for me, I've really enjoyed getting into mining. I'm going to continue to do it probably until Ethereum 2.0 launches next year. Now, as to when that launches, that is open to speculation. Now, for anyone that's considering getting into the space at the moment, it's something you need to weigh up the risk yourself because when Ethereum 2.0 launches and they move from proof of work to proof of stake, a lot of the mining hash rate that exists in the world at the moment won't be able to focus on Ethereum. So it will go onto the other coins and other coins that are worth a lot less won't provide as much income, but there will be some sort of income. So it's something you need to do your own research on. For me, I'm happy to continue mining for now. I'll keep an eye on ETH 2.0 and I'll see what happens with the overall costs and the revenues when ETH 2.0 launches. But you guys have got to make your own decision based on that. So hopefully you guys have found that video helpful. If you did, I really appreciate it. Hit that like button. Like I say, if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you do at Darren the DGen. If you want to see more from me, subscribe to the channel. And in front of me now, I'm going to pop up a couple of videos. One will be how to build your very first mining rig, and the other one will be how to buy altcoins.